Hello. Good morning. And welcome to Salt House Dock in Liverpool. Uh, this is where we left you last week when we'd come in off the River Mersey ferry across the Mersey. I told you they'd like yeah, that, didn't they? Yeah, they did like it. And we've been here a week and it's at, it's nice to have a bit of city life every now and then, isn't it? Absolutely. A, a little bit of civilization, a trip to the super dry shop. One. All right, six. <laughs> <laughs> and Sean bought some new slingbacks. So, <laughs> which you're loving, aren't you? But the thing is, we're kind of country boys, really. Yeah. Heart, you know? And we want to get back out there. So today, we're leaving Liverpool and we're going out the way we come in, which is through <laughs> the docks and Brunswick Lock and back down the Mersey or upstream now. Up, isn't it? up the Mersey, up yeah. Up the Mersey, uh, back to Eastern Lock and then somewhere, which we'll tell you about in a sec. Go. Uh, but we're at Salt House Dock. Uh, this is where we came the first time back in 2019. But we came down the Liverpool Link that time off the Leeds and Liverpool Canal. In the background, you can see Albert Dock, and it's really busy there. Now, this was originally called South Dock. But I the, didn't know that. Yeah, it was originally called South Dock, but, but they changed it because of Tony Blackburn. Fudge! No, honestly, the no, John Blackburn, that's it, yeah. It, he had the salt works just over there, and they used to refine a lot of salt that came in from Cheshire. You didn't know that, did you? Tony Blackburn! Yeah, honestly. No, John, it might be related, I don't know. What, are you all right? Yeah. All right. Uh, and it was changed to salt house dock because of the salt works. But after the industrial revolution, it all went a bit <laughs> Sorry. Spitting at me. And it was derelict for years and years and years. Uh, but in the 1980s, they started rejuvenating it and they cleared it all out. And the Med Albert dock looked really lovely. Do you remember Richard and Judy there? They used to I be do, there, yes. Yeah. They, yeah. yeah. It went downhill again, I think, didn't it, after that? I think so, yeah. <laughs> And they created the Liverpool Link, and now narrowboats can moor here for up to a week, and it is lovely, isn't it? Yeah. And because it's connected to the Mersey Estuary, there's lots of sea life. There's like jellyfish, loads, thousands, thousands of, jellyfish. of jellyfish. And you can see them when you look out and look down in the water, you can see the jellyfish everywhere. And there's other things like mussels, and shrimp, shrimp and snails, and barnacles, yeah. and even Korean sea squirts. And lots of sirens, which is what you get when you're more opposite the police headquarters in yeah. Liverpool. <laughs> so where are we going? Well, we're going back out the way we came, like we said. We're going through the docks to Brunswick Lock, back down onto the Mersey. We've got an incoming tide, but this time we're going with it, back to Eastern Lock. So, so instead of it- Zooming. Instead of it taking two or three hours, it should take about 40 minutes, yeah. <laughs> which is gonna be interesting. <laughs> through Eastern Lock, back onto the Manchester Ship Canal, and then hopefully, within a couple of hours, we should be at Ellesmere Port, and we're gonna moor at the National Waterways Museum. It should be fun. It will be. Join us. Off we go then. We've got to go through several docks back to Brunswick Dock, which is where the lock is that will take us down onto the River Mersey. This is Salt House Dock. The next one is Wapping Dock. Nothing to do with newspapers and London. <laughs> yeah. There was an arm just back there called <laughs> the Duke's Dock. It was built by James Brindley for the Duke of Bridgewater. Remember him when we were up at Runcorn? I do. On the Bridgewater Canal. And it's where his base was for all the traffic going between here and Manchester on the Bridgewater. Because back then, the ship canal hadn't been built yet. Right. This is Wapping Dock. Nothing to do with the newspapers in London. And that big building there used to be a massive warehouse. But it was bombed in the Blitz. And they rebuilt some of it, but you can just see to our left hand side there's like some iron girder things, stilt things that are just stood there and that's where it was bombed back in the Blitz and they haven't rebuilt that bit, they must have run out of money. Or bricks. Queen's Dock is quite a big one, it's a windy one as well. It was built by Henry Berry, not Henry Kelly. Oh, right. Going for gold, you didn't score four but you did score three. <laughs> Or Nick Berry, or Chuck Berry, Henry Berry in 1875. It was called Queen's Dock after Queen Charlotte. She was consort to George III. And you see those buildings over there? 
Keel building. It used to be two separate buildings and they were the tax officers. There were 1,500 tax inspectors in there. Wow. I bet that were a happy place to work on it. It was turned into apartments at a cost of about 30 million quid six years ago and they built the like bridges to join them together. You have to book Brunswick Lock in advance and we've been waiting for the lock gates to open. We were told to get here for 10.50, it's 10.50 and weirdly the lock is just about ready. So we're just waiting for the green lights to come on, then we're going to go in the lock. Laura Maisie, Fran and Rich are going to come in next to us and I believe a couple of yachts are going to be joining us too. Today is the Royal Mersey Yacht Club Regatta and dozens of yachts are about to compete in races up and down the Mersey Estuary. Not only that, but it's going to be more than just a couple of yachts joining us in the lock. Quite a few are leaving the moorings now on the marina and hovering around us, waiting for the lock gates to open so they can get on the river at the same time that we're trying to cross this busy stretch of this dangerous estuary. This is going to be interesting. The lock keeper said he wants us to go in the lock first and tie up to the pontoon alongside Laura Macy. Then the yachts are going to start coming in, which they did. And they kept coming, and kept coming, and kept coming, ten of us by the time the gates closed, and I think that's the most we've ever squeezed into one lot with. The gates opened, and it was like a tale of the hare and the tortoise. The yachts were out there like a flash onto the river, while our two narrowboats just crept tentatively out onto that incoming tide. We've got to be really careful as we come out of the lock because the Mersey's got the third highest tidal range in Europe, up to 10 metres high and speeds of around 10 knots, which is about 20 kilometres an hour. It's a bit nerve-wracking, having all these boats buzzing around us while we've been rocked about in the chop of this incoming tide. All of a sudden, the RNLI rescue boat came in alongside us and made sure that we were all right, asking where we were heading. They're fine with us being here, they just want to keep an eye out on everybody to make sure everyone is safe. What a great team of guys these are, they're doing an amazing job and it's like having a personal escort taking us through the choppy waters and all the racing boats across the river. Wow! <laughs> that was a bit choppier than we were expecting. We're on the incoming tide, so we're kind of riding it, but only about two or three knots uh, back towards Eastham. But that choppy part is when we come out of Brunswick Lock and cross the channel where the tide is at its strongest. We're now more or less on the other side where it's a little bit calmer. Uh, you could see all the yachts, uh, the racing starts within the next hour, so they're all just mingling about and getting ready and getting in positions. There's uh, going to be some sort of whistle at half past 11. Uh, but the lifeboat came to see us. How, how cool was that? Awesome. The lifeboat just coming right next to us just to say hello and ask where we were going. That was just so cool. Uh, so yeah, we're about a mile away from Brunswick Lock now, heading back towards Eastham. Uh, there is a couple of ships coming towards us, but they're more in the middle of the channel, so they're well away from us. And we're just coming up to, where are we? Honey. Barnsley. <laughs>
it's a bit blowy on oh. the Mersey this morning. I hope it's not causing too much rough around the muff on the microphone. Uh, we just had a message from Eastern Lock that the gates are open and they're already ready for us. Uh, so at the speed we're going, it should only take us about half an hour, 45 minutes to get there from where we are. We're moving at about two or three knots, which is not that bad. It's coming towards the end of the incoming tide, so it's just starting to slacken off. The Mersey has the second highest tidal range in the whole country, and the tides can vary from about four meters at Neep, uh, right up to about 10 meters at spring tide. Wow, I wouldn't want to be coming down here on a narrow boat on a 10 meter spring tide, would you? I like being on a speedboat. Just about at Eastern Lock, it's taken less than an hour to get here from Brunswick Lock, which is uh, about five or six miles back over there where the blue sky is. As you come to Eastern, there's actually more than one lock. On, on the right-hand side, on our starboard side, there's a, a huge lock where big, massive tankers go in and out of. We're not going in that way. It's like a cul-de-sac, innit, without bungalows. <laughs> It's like a cul-de-sac for big ships. Uh, we're going in the next big lock, which is the same one that we came out of just over a week ago. Uh, we've had instruction from the uh, the lock man or woman, lock the lock keeper. person in his porter cabin that likes to be called Sir, <laughs> that we're to uh, moor up on our port side and we're going to moor abreast with uh, Fran and Rich and their boat, Laura Maisie. The last time we came through here, the drop was about five meters. Today, it's only just under two meters till we reach the upper level of the Manchester Ship Canal. I still can't get over the size of this lock. It's 600 feet long and 80 feet wide, and it had hold 140 silver foxes. Can you imagine how shiny that would be? You'd be able to see it from space. When the gates opened, we waited a few moments before setting off, but do you know, sometimes you get a feeling that something's not right, and I can't put my finger on it. I couldn't put my finger on it at the time, but it just didn't feel right. And as soon as Laura Maisie moved off, I noticed that she was veering off towards the other side of the lock instead of going straight out. Her bow was kind of turning back and Fran lost control, and a really strong current started spinning the boat around and sending it hurtling towards the opposite lock wall. No sooner as we noticed Laura Maisie being spun around in the lock, that same freaky current got hold of us and it tilted us over a little bit as our boat started being dragged backwards into the lock on a weird angle. And so I just darted down the gunnel, I mean it was probably a bad idea at the time, towards the bow to try and stop us from slamming into that opposite lock wall. And Sean was just struggling to control the boat using the engine and the bow thrusters. That was a bit airy. The last thing I said to Stuart when the gates were opening is, do we need to give it a minute for the water to settle? Do you remember when we went down and out, we had to wait because there was a lot of disturbance. Yes. So we waited about a minute before we left. And he says, no, it'll be fine. <laughs> so Fran and Rich went out in front of us and the water just came in from nowhere and just flung them straight into the side of us, which sent us literally careering backwards and sideways back towards the uh, front lock gates, the bottom gate. Oh, all done. I think I need an Imodium now. <laughs> A lot of people ask, where's Otis? Where's Otis? When we do some of the videos. And when we do trips like this on the Mersey where it can be quite 
uh, unstable. Dangerous. Yeah, it's dangerous to put it in a word. So we always keep him, we exercise him on a morning and we give him a, a really big run or a walk to tire him out. Uh, and then we give him some treat balls to keep him occupied where he has to work out how to get the treats out. Uh, and then we basically lock him inside the boat so he's safe. Uh, not even with a, a life jacket, he's just not safe with the tide. Uh, so please don't ask where's Otis, Otis is safe. And then when we do get back on the safety of a canal, which we are now, he gets a big fuss. just coming up to the National Waterways Museum and uh, we can see the lighthouse which is where we need to do a starboard turn and that takes us into a basin and there's a lock and that lock will take us on to the Shropshire Union Canal. Now we've had to book this in advance because there's a swing bridge over the lock as well and we have to book the council to swing the swing bridge and the Canal and River Trust to do the lock because it comes onto the ship canal. Hopefully, keep your fingers crossed, everything will come together and the lock will be open and the swing bridge will be swinging. Swung! We're at the National Waterways Museum at Ellesmere Port. We've just come off the Manchester Ship Canal, we managed to get through the lock and we're moored up there and if we forget where we are, we're next to that big beast called Cuddington. Sounds like a pudding, doesn't it? I was just going to say, did you say pudding? I'll have some Cuddington and custard. Mmm, custard. Uh, it's been an exhilarating day. We set off from Liverpool at half past ten this morning. It's now 25 to two, Ooh. which means it's taken us just over three hours, literally yes. three hours and five minutes, which is pretty quick because it took us five hours to go the other way, but then again we did do an extra six mile. That's still quite quick though. Yeah. We were racing on the incoming tide coming into Eastern Lock. And what happened in Eastern Lock? I mean, can we talk about that? Yep. Go on then. The lock gates opened and it just all went a bit weird. The water went a bit weird. The water went a bit weird. Now there shouldn't be much of a current, a flow coming in the Manchester Ship Canal at that point, but for some reason there was. And it, it just it just went a bit yeah. It spun us. Yeah, it was like being on the waltzers, but without that man saying, scream if you want to go faster. <laughs> Wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. You remember that from I Phoenix do. Nights? I do. Uh, <laughs> but excitement over. Oh, and the, the lifeboat, when the lifeboat came like coming really close to us. Awesome. And waving. I thought it were going to give us cake. But he went like that. He just wanted to be on a Fox as a float video. He did. There you go. We, <laughs> so we're not at the National Railway Museum, we're at the National Waterways Museum, which is a bit of a letdown, because it's taken us two and a half years to get here. <laughs> and we're gonna chill out for a couple of days and recover from the Mersey trip before we have a wander around the museum. Yeah. Uh, so join us next week for that. We hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you have, and you're not already, subscribe to the channel. You get a warm feeling all the way through you. Well, you do. I do. Uh, hit the like button, the thumbs up, and hit the sub notifications if you'd like YouTube to let you know when we release a new video. Uh, the, another good thing you could do is you can actually print posters of us and our channel name and stick them up in shop windows, you know, like the circus do. Oh, God help them. Yeah, they could do that and spread the word to your family and friends about the channel. Ma all this madness in a shop window. <laughs> if you want to help support the channel and keep this rubbish going, uh, you can become a YouTube member. There's a, a link if you're watching on a, a, a tablet or, well, not that sort of tablet, like, a, like an electronic tablet or a phone up there. Are you all right? Yeah. We're hungry because we've had that much food in Liverpool over last week. And if we go back to boat, we've got a jacket potato waiting for us. It's just not going to be enough. <laughs> There's a pub there. <laughs> See you next week. Bye-bye. Ta-da. Ah. Show the ladies and gentlemen the paddleboard. Yay!
his dock and on that side a lot of people think that the River Mersey is really bad kind of uh, you know <laughs> you can just see the 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 thing you know with the things and the things hanging off it like that and we can see that there you go bye are you all right? Yeah. You want to get it out of your system? I'm all right. You need to talk to somebody. No. <laughs> you can tell by the eyebrows that I'm not very confident that this is all going to go to plan, <laughs> can't you? Which can prove difficult. So we had Brunswick Walk. Bruns Brunswick, Brunswick Walk. He's going to do that again. I thought Ken Hom did walks. <laughs> not Brunswick. I want a Brunswick Walk now. A Brunswick Walk? Don't get us started on Chinese food after what happened in Liverpool the oh, other night. Oh, you don't, don't ask. Do these eyes look like stressed eyes to you? <laughs> really, really. <laughs> You can't say that! Do you think I should scratch my bum and throw poo at them like the monkeys did with me in ten weeks? <laughs> you can't put none of this on. Why not? Because you can't say things like that. We are at the National Railway Museum. <laughs> <laughs> we are at the National Railway... <laughs> uh, we're at the National Boat Museum at Ellesmere. What's up with you? We're at the National... What's it called? <laughs> it's not a boat museum, is it? Is it Waterways? Don't national wa It's National Waterways Museum. We're at the National Waterways Museum at Ellesmere. 